hit us with questions, or we can even just be done or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so are the are the donations tax deductible? We are 501c3. Everything is tax deductible. Yeah. Um, so just so I'm clear, um, the link benefits, the recipients, they, sometimes they have cash assistance on their card. Sure. Is that can that be used for the double value coupon? Too? That's a good question. So for the double value, we and we only process. So when you swipe um, with a machine, it says cash benefit or link benefit, um, and it's we it's usually just press link benefit unless the customer tells us otherwise. The cash benefit um, on that card back with you know the '96 Welfare Reform Act with President Clinton pretty much eliminated all forms of cash assistance. So it's something that in the below like two percent of link card holders actually have cash assistance on their card. Um, but it's all processed as from their link um, because the double va that's how the double value has to work. We can't match the link cash. It has to be the link food stamp dollars. So if they have cash assistance, like, like a lot of people I work with mm -hmm. fortunately do get cash assistance, mm -hmm. so they, they can or can't use that for a double They could. Value. If they explicitly told us when they swiped it that you'd like to process a cash transaction and our machine prompted and gave us that option, then they could do so. Okay. But did we have any of that? But we, that we've never encountered that before at 61st Street Market or at any of the 15 city Chicago markets that we've um, worked with. All the way back there. So, um, back in my first slide, in the, uh, that from the pie chart for the entire financial year of 2019, mm -hmm. uh, that there was 20,000, or sorry, that might not be the entire, but there were 20,000 spent yes, about uh, that. by a link, uh -huh. uh, and then 17,000 spent by the double value. Mm -hmm. Is that because people are like maxing out on the double value component and then spending additional money on the link course because they're not using the entire the double value component. The first assertion that you had is correct. So if someone swipes their link card and they want forty dollars on it, they're only getting that twenty-five dollar match. So that's where the the gap in distribution is. Um, the redemption rate, both for link dollars and um, DVCP, covers around 96 to 98 percent. Um, and so I think we had about 575 dollars left on the books of unredeemed link and double value out of the however 20,000, and so we distributed. Yeah. Okay, so it's only a 25 dollar match, not a double match. Uh, matching, doubling up to 25. Up to 25. Yeah. So is there a minimum spend? Nope. Nope. So is that 25 always been 25 or has it been lower? No, and in fact, in fact, a 61st Street Farmers Market is, is one of the higher basket sizes. Some other markets in our network in the state and the Link of Illinois network may, might only match 10 or 15. It depends on their uh, market capacity, their administrative capacity, their 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 funding, and and their also their foot their foot traffic as well as their low income population. So we we would like to advocate for a bigger basket uh, being matched. We think that's a good look, uh, but. That's kind of in process right now. Not everybody can start with that level. So twenty-five dollar match is that per month? No, it's or per cardholder per market day. day. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we could come like once a week. And, you know, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Once yeah. Every week or, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's. I mean, the maximum is pretty. Unless there's five Saturday markets yeah. in a month, is a hundred dollars okay. um, in the yeah. matching. Sure. Value and we like have some really really savvy shoppers when it comes to that. For instance, there are these. Um, there are these ladies who are uh, retirees, is that right? Uh, who then uh, they they garden, they garden for themselves. So they pretty much grow grow all their own vegetables as it is, right? But they would come to the market and load up, max it out every week, every week, every week, just max it out, and then they would roll up every other month with a big stack of four or five hundred bucks, and they would buy a whole goat. Go. From from <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're growing our own vegetables. We can't grow a goat there or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't grow, can grow goats here, but yeah, it, it's tricky. <laughs> they don't have, they don't have they don't have yards for that. So, so it's so it, uh, we actually see a lot of actually really savvy kind of strategies that come through uh, with 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 buying stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> with like it's a party yeah, and they come through to grab that goat. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. Um, yeah. Do uh, some of your purveyors drop their prices as the day goes on, like for produce, things like that? Uh, um, there's not like a standard policy. Some do, um, for sure. Um, I know, especially with uh, in our market, if someone's shopping with Link, there's definitely because um, all the vendors who sell at our market buy into this mission. There's no question about that. So there's definitely a sense between them. If you're buying ten dollars worth of apples, they might give you like thirteen or yeah. something like that. Just throw some extra yeah. stuff in the bag. Um, so there's that. Um, the price drop is more vendor, uh, vendor to vendor. I had another question. This might be 
really digging into my new shit here. Sure. So you you know you mentioned um, food deserts or uh-huh. places with food access challenges. Sure. So in that area, you know the the closest you know I'm somewhat familiar with here. So the closest um farm, uh, supermarkets that I can think of is like the co-op or whatever it is. Yeah, it's a treasure island. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Or save a lot. Mm-hmm. At 63rd and yeah, yeah so people yeah. want to shop at Save a lot, right? Right. Yeah. So, but the Treasures Island, the the produce is far too expensive for anybody, you know, at some length to go there. So, sure. Like, is there um is there a way to to I mean, specifically with Save a lot, uh-huh. there's a lower quality of um of produce things of that nature. Is there a way to kind of um compare the quality of food that you're, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's still yeah, it's still produce. Yeah, yeah for sure. Produce. Yeah. Well, as we I, it's, yeah. yeah. I, I, as we kind of touched on before, we would totally like to work towards that space. And um, there's uh, there's a lot of people that are kind of working on this, but like a Bionutrient Food Association is one of them, for instance, that's looking at to be like, it's not only like the amount of calories in your food, but it's like the nutrients in your food. Right. So if we're going to be apples to apples, haha, ha, but if we're going to be comparing like <laughs> yeah, right. apples to apples, it's like, what's in that apple? It's not only necessarily whether it looks healthy, but like you can have widely varying nutrient content based on the quality of the soil that that plant grows from, okay? So like you could be on like some really, really heady soil eating those like good veggies and you don't need to eat a ton to get your to get topped off on minerals and vitamins. Whereas if you're buying something that it, okay, it's cheaper but it's also much lesser quality, grown on much lesser quality soil, it's been in transit on a semi truck and it's 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 a variety that's gamed for shelf life and not for nutrient density, then yeah, absolutely. We need to look at that to see like what literally what are you getting with your dollar. And if you go back to that Whole Foods um, Green City Market chart, they simply compared on one market day going and just the price tag sticker. Right. What we want to do um, this summer is dip, dig way deeper into that data, so incorporate food miles not only of how that apple got there into the price tag, but how the person got there to buy the apple and incorporate the the human transportation costs involved, not only the apple's transportation costs involved, and try to see what comes out um, the other end of that. Can you talk to something about a money market program or something? Oh, market money. Oh, market money is one of our outreach strategies, especially with youth. So when uh, we do gardening classes, we do cooking classes, we do in-school classes, and so um, at the end of all those, there's a letter that goes home with the parents attached to either 5 or $10 worth of market money that the kids can then come um, and use at the market just as kind of a, an introduction. We do samplings in the classes as well, and so like dipping raw rhubarb sticks into honey, and then the kids come run into the market, Danny, Danny, Mr. Danny, like where are those red sticks that I could dip in the honey? So <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the market money is. And it, um, the dollar value isn't hugely, isn't high or impressive, but the actual impact I think is important, but we can't measure that. Yep. Uh, so you guys showed a uh, set of data from uh, from the link that uh-huh. had like zip code uh-huh. and then some stats about each uh, each transaction. Uh-huh. Is that data that's only accessible to you, or is that publicly available? We we had to get a dispensation from the USDA and from Xerox, okay. and then we had to bug them for three months after that. Okay, so and you, you sign like a non non disclosure, so you can't give it away. Uh, I forget the paperwork, but yeah, it's um, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something dumb like that. Yeah. But it's we it's it's um uh it was something that we like really kind of had to lobby for to say that this isn't this is sure. this would be important for us to uh, present because we um we're these these ad, like as we as we've been talking about these advocacy efforts aren't necessarily government funded but for private funders they want to see metrics so we're like hey support our support our food stamp program support our farmers market program support this uh, education program support this other thing they're like well what's the outcomes what's happening with that and like what's happening on the consumer level of behavior and we're just like hey. Shrug our shoulders, don't know, it's a black box, you know, so um, we hope to continually to work in a positive way with the USDA as well as like any kind of like technological providers like Xerox or whoever else it might be to just say, hey, this this data could be really, really valuable. Like, for instance, I want to go back to them and say, hey, thanks for giving this to us by the month, like, can we get it by the date, yeah. you know, so, yeah, for sure, for sure, so we'll see, um, that kind of remains touch and go, I don't know how you describe it exactly, but yeah. I know. On on fifty fifth, there's a produce shop, a little small open one. produce. Yeah, that place. Yeah, is yeah. Very, very affordable. That place is awesome. Yeah. Yes, yeah. A kind of expensive organic meat. 
Sure, but organic meat should be expensive, and meat in general should be expensive because we should be eating less of it all around. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, just, just putting that out there, the, 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 the cost of meat is artificially cheap to everyone's detriment. And we would all do better with a lot more plants and a lot less meat. And the meat that we have should be respectful to the soil. And right now, there is almost no meat that is made that's respectful to the soil. You really need to seek out those local makers of good pasture meats. Um. All right. <laughs> one last one. Um, can you can you uh, go into a little bit more about um, the pilot program that you're setting up? For for which? Um, for the mobile uh, link. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So we want to we want to possibly try it. So um, there was a federal RFP that went out, and it was awarded to a company that made an iPhone sled uh, that um, can print a link card receipt. And we're just not totally sure whether that is going to be a solution that is going to work for all farmers markets or all farmers markets that don't meet like a specific like administrative standard. And maybe you can speak to this because you're starting a farmers market and you know, that, you know. But there are a number of farmers markets in the city that are that are young markets that are doing good work. But a lot of times with these types of programs, the administrative burden to get on board is just like too too much. So. Um, this is unrelated to my work at Experimental Station, but uh, looking forward to the next CNT uh, Urban Sustainability Apps Contest, which is coming up in May and into June, if anybody would like to work on an open source food access platform that is based on an open ledger system, so that if you were to donate to food access at, let's say, a market like Justin's or uh, Angela Taylor's Garden Network in Garfield Park, for instance, then not only would uh, not only would you be able to know that that's going to a market that's offering the good stuff in an area that needs the good stuff, but it would literally tell you when the money that you had put into it left, and which market it left on, and which day, and what types and general, generally speaking categories of foods that money that you push towards food assistance would go towards, okay? So we're going to kind of like pilot that over the CNT Apps competition. If anybody wants to talk about it, it'll be open on GitHub. We'll like have it all be super open. Do some cool stuff with like geofencing at farmers markets and like doing stuff because there are there are like um, administrative like kind of bureaucratic lock-in ways that the USDA and some of these other kind of programs work that seem to be like technologically unnecessary and burdensome. Like for instance, our USDA number got shut down overnight and we couldn't serve uh, the 61st Street Farmers Market. And the reason was is that someone with a similar address to our registered address also applied. And they were like, fraud, shut it down. And you know, we've been doing this for like years and years and years and years, and we're on like first time basis or first name basis with like a lot of these folks that we're working with, and we're like, wouldn't you just call us <laughs> and be like, hey, something's weird about this address, you know? So for instance, like there 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 are there are ways and there are ways. Um, we think there are possibly more open ways. Um, to deal with the money behind food access, and I don't think that the government is going to come around anytime soon on that transparency stuff in terms of where your food assistance money is going. So we may as well do it in the meantime. Cool. Thanks, guys. Cool.